scale the entire population of a city like Sydney with 5 million people, you would only need 90 of these wind turbines for the entire city. Now that assumes that no one in that city had their own solar panels and was generating their own electricity. But if half of the people in that city were doing that, then you'd only need 45 of them. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. This is the world's biggest wind turbine. One of these can power 55,000 homes, 55,000 for one single wind turbine. So this, um, well, this means that China's Dongfang, not Dongfeng, the EV company, but Dongfang Electric has installed a 26 megawatt offshore wind turbine. Me, well, basically, that means it now has a world record. It is the world's most powerful wind turbine in the world. It's taken the record away from Siemens Gamesa's 21.5 megawatt unit. And that company is based, of course, in Denmark. So it's a lot bigger than the previous biggest in the world. The previous biggest in the world was 21.5. This is 26. That's a 4.5 megawatt difference. The state-owned manufacturer announced that the prototype has been placed at a testing and certification base and it works. It doesn't just fall to pieces, which is what can happen when wind turbines get too big. The machine, the largest in the world in both capacity and size, features a blade wheel diameter of more than 310 meters. That is 1,107 feet. Now, think about it like this way, right? The biggest hits you've seen in ba a baseball game? What's the biggest hits we've ever seen? About 500 feet, approximately. So if you hit a baseball, yeah, the longest ever in history wouldn't even be half the diameter of this wind turbine. That's kind of hard to hard for the mind to actually <laughs> envision just how enormous these wind turbines actually are. The hub height is 185 meters, which is 607 feet. Earlier this month, Dongfang shipped the world's heaviest nacelle along with its three giant blades to the site. Designed for offshore areas, so basically designed for putting it in the ocean, with wind speeds of eight meters per second and above, the turbine can produce 100 gigawatt hours of electricity annually with average winds of 10 meters per second. And there's a lot of places in the world where you do get those conditions where these wind turbines would be ideal. That output from a single wind turbine is enough to power 55,000 homes annually, cutting coal consumption by 30,000 tonnes and reducing carbon dioxide emissions by 80,000 tonnes. The system is engineered to withstand winds of up to 200 kilometres per hour, according to Dongfang. And, you know, 200 kilometers per hour is basically like a cyclone. Now, this installation shows you that China is growing in its dominance in renewable energy, but not just renewables, also in offshore wind energy. This year, China is expected to install nearly three out of every four of the world's new offshore wind turbines. That was reported by Bloomberg, by the way, Bloomberg NEF. Now, one of the reasons why China is able to install so many wind turbines offshore is because the government does whatever it wants. I mean, you know, um, you could say, let's just be nice and call it a benevolent dictatorship. That's pretty much what it is. And so that means that regulation and stuff, you know, there's not, a, not as much of it to get past. Now, there is some regulation and stuff that happens in China for sure. It's not just some sort of crazy free-for-all, but it does mean that, you know, one of the problems that we see in the West is... Um, Joe Joe Boggs, who lives three hundred kilometers not off the not off the coast, he'll write to the government of Australia and say, "I don't want this offshore wind plant. This is a joke. I oppose this." And he'll ask a few of his mates, and they'll say, "Yeah, let's write to the government," and they'll write it too. And and you know what happens with a lot of these projects that are proposed in the West? People find out about them that don't even live in the same state. This is extremely common. It's often reported by Renew Economy. .com.au, 
They say people actually write letters pretending that they live in the area and that they oppose renewable energy projects. They say the wind turbines, Donald Trump told us they're going to kill everyone and kill the whales and they're terrible and they're a disaster. And what will happen is projects will often be, um, well, go through so much red tape that the developers just give up. They just like, well, this is too hard. Why are we bothering with this? And unfortunately, that means that some of these projects don't go through. And that's why it's 75% of the entire world's wind turbines that were installed this year have been in China. Well, it's one of the reasons anyway. That compares with setbacks in the United States, Europe and Japan says interesting economy where projects have stalled amid, uh, they say high financing costs, supply chain strains and declining subsidies. But the truth of it is that it's more about regulations and government's not supporting it. China's advantages lie in integrated supply chains, state-backed financing, policy support, and rapid technological improvements. You have this playground of a big and diverse market that provides domestic companies with a platform of skills and innovation needed to build their global competitiveness, said Yu Jia Han, a researcher with Global Energy Monitor at Bloomberg. The country's largest turbine makers, including Dongfang, Gold Wind, and Mingyang Smart Energy, are pushing the are pushing beyond China. While they benefit from lower production costs and vast local demand, foreign expansion has been a challenge, partly due to limited operational track records and political scrutiny overseas. And to be honest, partly also due to the difficulties in shipping these giant turbines around the world. It's not that easy. They're so big. The contrast, though, is stark with Western players, says Interesting Engineering. Industry leaders such as Denmark's Orsted, Siemens, Gamesa, and General Electric have been squeezed by rising component prices, high interest rates, and wavering government support. Japan's Mitsubishi recently withdrew from three offshore projects, while the German auction shed ended without a single bid as costs climbed. Now, Costs are pretty high in Germany, so are regulations. You can kind of see why that might have happened. China's scale and innovation, by contrast, are reshaping economics and putting an end to new coal-fired power plants being built. The median cost of offshore wind power in China is now less than half that of the United Kingdom, the world's second largest market for wind, less than half. Provinces like Guangdong, are targeting ambitious capacity growth. 17 gigawatts of offshore wind by 2025, more than any single country outside China has achieved to date. So just one province is putting up more wind power than any other country in the world. For Dongfang, the new 26 megawatt turbine reflects the trend toward ever larger turbines. They're getting bigger and bigger and bigger as developers are pushing further offshore in search of stronger winds and lower costs. The truth is, it, the efficiency does get better when you make them bigger. There has to be some limit to this, like how, how big can they get? They're getting so enormous now that at some point, the efficiency trade-off is going to, you know, it's gonna start going the other way. It's gonna start becoming a net negative. We haven't hit that point yet. The truth is at this point, they are so enormous, so incredibly big, and still that does help to reduce costs and make them more efficient. This is not just a game to see who can build the biggest wind turbines in the world. It's actually about getting the best return on investment. And these wind turbines are not only staggering in size and scale, but they're also pretty staggering in terms of their efficiency. Much more efficient, I can tell you, than building a nuclear power plant. Thanks for watching.